I said this is proof one, okay? This is rather a blunt instrument to use, first principles, right? We tend to use first principles when I don't know what else we can do, okay? But there's another way to do this, and it is rather more elegant, but it's, it's sort of simpler and faster, but I wanted you to understand this because this is actually the real stuff I want you to get, okay? Um, remember I said, because f could be anything, f could be anything, therefore we have to use principles that work with any function, right, and any derivative. And therefore we draw, draw a conclusion, okay, I better use, um, I better use first principles, because it'll work with anything, right? But actually I kind of sneakily avoided the fact that you do know other principles that will work with any function. For instance, if I showed you a function which was the product of two other functions, right? It doesn't matter what those other functions are. They could be anything, and you can still use the product, product rule on this guy, right? No. <laughs> could use the product rule. In the same way, if I had u divided by v, I could use the quotient rule, no matter what u and v are, okay? So product rule, quotient rule, these are all just rules that apply to anything, right? There's one more that you guys know about. You know a chain rule. Now, why do I go to chain rule and make you think about that? Well, see this? See this? And see this? They are, in fact, functions of functions. Do you see that? Right? For example, here. This is a function of x, but this is a function of negative, negative x, right? I know negative is, is not very complicated, but it's a different function, right? So I've got functions of functions happening here, okay? So I'm going to take advantage of that. I'm going to start again. I just want f dash, right? F dash. I know, <coughs> excuse me, that the definition of f dash is, um, think back to my notation with you know, the first, first and second derivatives, it's f, <coughs> and I differentiate that. I'm going to slap a differential operator at the front. d on dx. Are you okay with that? But by definition, remember, right, because f is odd, instead of writing f of x, I can write, if I come back to this guy over here, <coughs> f of x here is, if I multiply both sides by negative 1, it's minus f of minus x. Do you agree with that? Like, I just got that straight from here and I multiplied both sides. I'll quickly finish, okay? Don't worry, it won't take me long. So I'm going to substitute f for that guy, that guy right there. Okay, so that's minus f of minus x. Are you happy? Just substitution. Okay. And now look carefully. I'm differentiating something. There's a constant in here. What's the difference between, say, the derivative of x cubed and the derivative of, say, 100 x cubed? What's the difference between those two? 100 times. Yeah, it's just multiplied by 100. In fact, this is just 100 of the other one. Right? Do you remember this when we established the rules of differentiation right at the beginning? If you have a constant coefficient, you can just pull them out. I have a constant coefficient here, namely negative 1. So I can pull them out. Out it goes. And now I'm ready to differentiate. That's, um, that's a function of a function. So when I do the function of a function, do the inside and then I do the outside. Inside, then outside. Okay. I've got a minus sign already hanging out the front. What's the derivative of that inside function? Minus one. It's negative one. What's the derivative of the outside function? Well, the outside function is f. So therefore, its derivative is f dash. Like that's, that's all it is. I don't know what f is, right? That's, that's all I can say. So it's <laughs> f dash of minus x. Don't forget, it is still minus x, right? Hold on, I have some uh, negatives to cancel, right? What have I got on the left? I've got f dash. What have I got on the right? f dash negative x. The derivative is even. 